we are discussing the role of the African diaspora in Pan-Africanism or in developing Africa. Many a times we find that the effort to bring together the African diaspora uh, to participate fully in African issues has been met with numerous uh, setbacks. And we find it is not as easy as it sounds to convince the African diaspora to make Africa a favorite destination. Yes. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest challenges, obviously, is language. When the African diaspora attempts to come to Africa, they will only be able to engage and exchange with elites, with educated Africans who are actually not the bulk of the African and the Africa they need to experience. What we need to be having at this time is a dialogue. And when we organize events like the Pan-African retreats, we give an opportunity for communities to come and meet diasporans for the first time. The exchange gets all the more better with programs and activities designed around facilitating maximum contact between the visiting African and the community African family member. What can Africa do to attract the African diaspora? Because like I've said, they do not find Africa a favorite destination. Leaving the language reason alone, they want to go to Europe, they want to go to China, they want to go elsewhere apart from Africa. And we also know that the media has tainted Africa with this picture that doesn't appeal. It doesn't appeal to the African diaspora. They know Africa is a diseased continent. Oh, Africa is a hungry continent. There are wars all over the place. There's Ebola. And this is the picture that has been painted out there that the Africans in the diaspora do not find Africa a favorite place. Well, what can be spoken for the diaspora African is that they really want to get places and they want to get places for a good reason. One of the biggest reasons they want to get places is they want to do business. So unless the African motherland positions themselves in a situation of having business relationships, business linkages with the African diaspora, then it, all, it will always be easier for them to relate with people in Asia because they have a higher business acumen or they have more business-ready products to give to the international market. I believe in dialogue. I think there must be a dialogue between the African diaspora and the African motherland to see that we have many business-ready concepts that can be shared between the diaspora and the motherland to constitute a need for engaging on the business platform. Well, AFAD is uh, doing all it can to create this platform that will allow the connection or the interaction of the Africans and the African diaspora. But I see that there's going to be a need for African governments to act up, to make sure they make this possible. Because if the African diaspora are going to be interested in working in Africa, they need to be supported by policies that governments have set up? Well, yes, African governments may really have a part to play, but I believe that they are held hostage by all other business interests that are not necessarily African. I believe we still need to help African governments understand this better, to get a grip, to get a handle on this. For example, why would an African diaspora sincerely pay for a visa coming to Africa? And yet, the Asian 
and the European investor will have most of these and other benefits, tax waivers, and even some of them they pay their trust. African governments facilitate their investors coming here. I believe we need to have a mind shift so that African governments can be can give more concession to the returning African diaspora so as to make this possible. Well, uh, the government, I think uh, it was in the news sometime back that the president of Ghana announced the year of return for the African diaspora. So, with a fact, uh, we are trying to uh, interest the governments of Africa to take efforts related or close or even more than that because there's no way that these people are going to find peace in making decisions to travel to Africa, to invest in Africa when the policies there are not favoring their stay here or their working here. So can people, can communities put up systems that can help these people to come and settle or work and live here. Communities have been largely abandoned by just about everybody and they have been effectively taken over by religious organizations, by quack philanthropists pretending to help communities in this and that while bringing into the communities negative practices that wouldn't belong there anyway. Mm -hmm. So it, become, it becomes all the more important, all the more urgent for the engagement between organizations like Afar, organizations like the Population Initiative to come together to engage the diaspora, to see that the communities are empowered, that governments are engaged with, and that the negative news is rolled back with first-hand accounts of visiting diasporans that have managed to touch base with the real African in the community. Mm. Yes. There's, a, there's a, a pattern of conferences, forums, conventions, where people come together and they talk about everything but issues that affect them or they talk about everything but arriving at solutions to solve those problems. Yes. We have a, a Pan-African retreat this month from 19th to the 21st, and there's so much we have put out there to interest people to participate. But this is not the type of participation that is always around where people sit down, eat, drink, and talk and live without solutions. So we are calling upon everyone for discussions like this and more. Do not miss out on the African Governance Forum. Do not miss out on the African Cultures Bonfire and Story Night. Do not miss out on all the good African foods, nutritional, medicinal, and absolutely delicious. All these and more are the coming Pan-African Retreat, 19th to 21st of July, peak.